The Cavs are now 12-0 after a 36-piece from Donovan Mitchell in Chi-Town. Now tied for the fourth longest win streak to start a season of all time, the Cavs are officially halfway to tying the 2015-16 Warriors 24-0 record. We're about to look at why Cleveland's domination is wild. Right quick, over 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. Setting a historically great pace, the 24-25 Cavs are the 8th team in NBA history to begin a season 12-0. They own the best starting record in franchise history, as well as the best starting record for a new coach in NBA history. This team is one of three squads to start a season 11-0 or better since 2000 next to the 0203 Dallas Mavericks and the 1516 Golden State Warriors. Both of those teams made the conference finals with the Dubs advancing to the finals where they lost in seven to the LeBron Kyrie led Cleveland Cavaliers. Donovan Mitchell's 36 points on 63% true shooting was his 55th 30 plus point outing in a Cavaliers uniform, which is now third most in franchise history. Mitchell passes Kyrie, and he achieved this feat in a miraculous 247 less games than Irving. Defensively, D. Mitch had four steals, while on the other side, 25 of Donovan's scoring total against Chicago on Monday night came in the first half. And in terms of first half points among all players, it says a lot that MVP candidate Jason Tatum is the only player with more of them for the season as a whole than Donovan. In that first half, Mitchell would pull off this prime John Wall-esque mid-air 360 lay-in, which was beautiful. For the past two seasons and change, since coming over from Utah in September of 22 in a trade for Lowry Markkinen, Colin Sexton, Ochai Abaji, and two first-round picks, Donovan Mitchell's been the ultimate professional and embraced playing in Cleveland to the fullest extent currently leading the number one ranked team in the NBA in scoring while shooting a career best 41% from distance, you could argue that Donovan hasn't received enough credit for what he's done. But underrated isn't a term Spida is ready to embrace, at least not until he gets it done when it matters most. At the end of the day, I haven't won at a high level. I mean, I've won a lot of games, you know, I've accomplished a lot of things individually, but at the end of the day, you're right, wrong, or indifferent, you're judged on what you do in the playoffs and what the team does in the playoffs, not just yourself. So, you know, that's that's the goal, you know what I mean? How do we find ways to win at the highest level? Conference finals, finals. Um, that's my mindset, um, and that's, that's what it's going to take, you know what I mean? So, do I feel like I'm underrated? Yeah, for sure, but, like, you know, I can't sit here and complain. I ain't made a conference finals yet, you know what I mean? I ain't made a finals. So, like, I got to do something about it, and that's being the leader for this group, and um, then go from there. Against the Bulls, three players off the bench in Ty Jerome, who we'll get to, George Niang, who posted his season high in scoring, and Karis LeVert, who leads the league in plus-minus, scored exactly 12 points each. Jerome continued to be a lethal option in crunch time as he was a team high plus 21 in this game. Jerome's averaging 3.3 steals per 36 minutes, which ranks second in the NBA among qualified players. On this play, he snatches it away from Josh Giddy, misses the triple, then steals it from Giddy yet again, which leads to a Karis LeVert 3. Ty's offense has been just as menacing as his defense. Jerome's 10.2 point per game average, albeit through 12 games, is being recorded on an uncanny 61% shooting from the field and 54.2% shooting from distance. Donovan Mitchell played with Ty Jerome as an eight-year-old kid, but even he's surprised by how good the former Warrior's been. Is this kind of what you thought you guys were going to get from Ty? No disrespect to Ty, that's my dog, but no. <laughs> like, I knew he was a really, I, I mean, obviously, I know he's a really good player. I know he's capable of, but like, I mean, was he shooting 60 from three? Like, you know what I'm saying? And we saw it in camp, but like, I mean, like, shoot, he was he's, he was the best player in camp, you know what I mean? So for him to continue to be that guy, and then my biggest thing is defensively, he had what? three steals tonight, like being able to be in the right places. Um, offensively, again, being being aggressive. He sets the tone for us. Um, you know, when he comes in and then last game, he comes in and dominates the fourth quarter. Like, you know what I mean? So like, um, I know he's capable of that, but I didn't, you know, we didn't necessarily know that he was going to come in and start doing this. And now, like I said, there's a trust. There's a trust that's built and, you know, he's, he's dominant. He's done it in college. He's done it when we were eight. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's great to see him just continue to be that guy uh, with the confidence, with the IQ. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, definitely great to see. 
with averages of 25 points on a 62-58-88 shooting split over four games from last Monday to Sunday, Darius Garland took home player of the week. Garland received a ton of flack after having a down year scoring the basketball in 23-24. The man's bounced back in 24-25 by thus far being the only player in the NBA to be averaging 20 plus points on at least 50% shooting from the field, 40% shooting from three point range, and 90% shooting from the foul line. Incredibly, Garland's making 46% of the career most 7.13s per game he's attempting. Up four in the final 30 seconds, Garland closed out the game against Chicago by getting switched onto and isolating Vucevic and hitting him with a tween cross tween combo to get the first step before lunging in for the nasty finger roll. People forgot how good Garland really was, and that's something his running mate in the backcourt is well aware of, and then some. Last year, uh, Darius obviously was dealing with some injuries, but he started off so hot this season. Mm -hmm. A couple of plays on the stretch tonight, you just kind of let him mm -hmm. off the balance. Have you noticed anything different? Well, I mean, I think people, we live in such a world where it's like, whatever happens recently is like, that's who you are. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I hate it. You know, especially for him last year, like that wasn't, you know, he was, he got poked in the eye. He's got his jaw wired shut. Like he's, he had stuff obviously with the family, like life happens. You know what I mean? You go through stuff and obviously like, you know, he had his ups and downs, but like the year before that he was hooping. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like people, we just saw how soon we forget. And that's what pisses me off and that's why I'm so happy for him to continue to take like he won player of the week and I asked him I was like that's you didn't win one last year he's like no I'm like that, that's one of many like you know what I'm saying because this is who he is you know what I mean I feel like people just automatically forgotten we live in such a recency bias world and I hate it because this is who Darius Garland is this is why he was an all-star this is why he got paid what he got paid you know this is this is who he is so um you know for him it's great to see him continue to be this this guy that he's been even before I got here um and I think that's that's one thing that, that we you know, him and I especially, we take pleasure in because it's like, yeah, like, people just forget. Like, it's like, it's like what happened before just never happened. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, it's great to see. Um, and he's going to continue to play this way. And we're going to continue to empower him to be that guy because for us to be who we want to be, um, we need it from him. We talked about Evan Mobley's smoothness in my last Cavs video, and he exemplified that on this move where he jabbed, put it on the deck, spun, and even after getting doubled, swept through and threw it down. Beastly stuff. For Mobley's development, we should credit a bit of that to Kenny Atkinson, who Mitchell touched on post-game. What does it say about Kenny and the impact that he's had? Mm -hmm. They've done it in Golden State, you know what I mean? So for, for us, it's just being able to trust in him, and he's able to trust in us and those guys. And some things work, some things don't, but we won't know until you try them and do them. And, I mean, it's great that it's working through a bunch of success, you know what I mean? But, like, I think the biggest thing is being able to be open and then us as a team being selfless. Like... We're, the, we're on the bench screaming, and then when the, when the starters are out there, they're on the bench screaming for us. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it takes as a group. Um, so, But Kenny's been phenomenal with it and continuing to trust in everybody, so it's been great. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.